just woke up and uh, making this entry because I uh, because I, I tend to forget those that I've uh, those lessons that I've learned days ago. This particular lesson I learned from <clears throat> from the movie A Score to Settle, which I I saw just uh, two nights ago. It starred Nicolas Cage, okay, one of my uh, one of my one of my favorite actors. Okay. Now this is this was a recent movie of his. It's about uh, an ex-con who uh, who had this plan of revenge against the. Uh, Against the very gang that sold, that ratted him out, uh, ratted him out decades ago. So, uh, plan went smoothly. He was trying to come to terms also with his uh, with his son, but eventually, in the final scenes of the movie, we I found out we found out that his son has, his son has been dead since two thousand five. Okay, fourteen years. <clears throat> because uh, he was a drug addict, and his closest uh, his closest friend, who eventually became the gang boss, had him had him murdered, and he found out when he was in jail. So that's when his uh, that's when his plan of revenge came out. Eventually, um, he found he also found out that the gang boss at the time. The one who, the one who actually ratted him out, uh, is has been in a coma for 15 years. Okay. Has been in a coma for 15 years. He already had, um, he already had a potential murder weapon in his hands when he uh, visited him in the hospital, in the in, in the senior home. Okay. He did plan on killing him. Instead, he gave him the the very the murder weapon was the very same bat they used on him. Gave it back. Gave it back to him. Then that's when he found out that uh, uh, Benjamin Bratt's character, close friend, yeah, was the one who actually ordered the hit on his son. So, uh, Pinuntanya sa mismong kasal ng anak niya mismong kasal ng anak nun that's when he found out uh, you know he was he was a drug that uh, his son was a drug addict and he had to had to he had to take him out it was a loose end and eventually police uh, police caught Nicholas Cage's character and uh, by and wow he ended his life in the worst way, suicide by cop. Okay. Basically, suicide by cop means they gave uh, he gave them a reason to to shoot at him. So that's what uh, his character died there, and uh, the spirit of his son asked him, "What what what's next for him?" He said. Ask God for ask God for for forgiveness. All right. Now, what lesson did I learn from a score to settle? Simple. Never take an eye for an eye too far. Okay. Now, well, I don't know. That, that's how the script went. That's how the script of the movie went. But in real life. If I would, uh, if I would be in that character's shoes, the moment I come out of jail, I, I might have ratted them out as well. That's how an eye for an eye works. Okay. Now, the character Nicholas Cage's character should have, uh, should have. Gone to the police. Gone to the po gone to the police. Or while he was in jail, he should have should have ratted them out as well. Okay. That's the uh, that's the most uh, that's the sweetest way of doing it because it still follows the 
still follows an eye for an eye. Okay, that's basic. That's basically that basically that is basically what an eye for an eye means. They ratted you out. You rat them out as well. But no, he took it a step too far. He actually in during the movie he killed I think two or three of them. Okay, so in the end, he gets gunned down by police. So yeah, he took it too far. That's why in the movie his character said, "Ask God for I want to ask God for forgiveness." Because he knew he took it too far. So. But basically, well, never take an eye for an eye too far was the lesson I learned from a score to set up. Before I start this entry, you should watch this. Na ikwento ko ano ba nangyari. Uh, yun nga po, hindi po, hindi po ako ang umalis sa ABS. Tinanggal po ako, binan, binan po ako. Uh, dahil nga dun sa insidente na napagkwentuhan namin yung franchise issue and nakarating sa isang boss at dumating ang, at ang impression nila kampi kami, may kinakampihan kami pero talagang ang binanggit ko lang nun was nako malabo na yan kalaban ba naman nila ang government at si presidente malabo na yan nakakalungkot lang na hindi kami nabigyan ng chance magpaliwanag or hindi man lang kami kinausap nung boss na actually kilala namin kung sino yung nag-ban sa amin pero hindi ko naman din siya pwedeng banggitin kasi baka bawal, alam mo na pero yon um, gusto ko lang na makapagkwento sa inyo see it? well just came to my attention this video from TikTok and I just gotta do an entry on it okay ABCBN has been championing freedom of speech and freedom of the press and according to well according to its allies and supporters its rights have been violated when its franchise its franchise renewal franchise renewal was disapproved by congress bullshit right this video by Daryl Ong now for those of you who don't know who Daryl Ong is, he's a famous singer here in my country, and he's a talent of ABS-CBN. Like, imagine, for just talking about the franchise issue, he gets, he gets fired the next day. Here's a guy who has been, uh, who, owed, who owes his career I think who, who owes his career to ABS-CBN and all of a sudden it's gone not because of the franchise uh, not because of the um, the disapproval of the franchise renewal but for just talking about it he gets fired by ABS-CBN alright ABS-CBN in my from my point of view has been a company of double standards. All right, this vi this TikTok video I got of Daryl Ong proves it. Okay, here's the lesson of the story. If an entity, whether it be a person or a company, promotes double standards, okay, if anything or anyone promotes a double standard you should not trust them head on you should not trust them right away okay if you yourself have a double standard you should not be trusted you are not credible you should not be taking your word for it for anything your opinions don't matter your opinion is shit okay your opinions should be treated like shit. Because you don't have any convictions. Right? Double standards suck. Okay? Double standards don't... Um, won't make you money, at the least. Won't give you a happy life. 
it won't even reap you uh, the, the, the connections you need or the friends you need to get through life. So the next time you're experiencing a double standard, whether it be from you or uh, from someone or something else, stay away from it. Okay? If it comes from yourself, you better, you better wise up. Get your act together. Okay? You should have a definite set of values. You want to, you want trust and respect. Quit the double standard thing. Personally, well, I get, I get some double standards of my own, but hey, uh, I weigh it in. Okay, I weigh it in. Whichever's the. Whichever, whichever doesn't serve me, me, or my brand, I junk it and go for the and go for the one that would benefit me. That's how you jump a double standard. I repeat, if someone or something has a double standard, do not trust it. The double standards do not deserve your trust. I just came across um, this post on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, one of one of one user was celebrating her graduation from college. Okay, she can't wait for uh, the next journey. It's so something to that effect. Okay, that's that's what her post was all about. And oh, I thought I said I thought um, I figured. You graduated during the. You graduated during a time of uncertainty, absolute uncertainty, All right? Well, with this pandemic going on, and a lot of uncertainties still hanging in the balance for 2020. Uh, well, I actually don't feel sorry for the for this year's graduates. Okay, for this year's graduates. Why? Well, because I have no idea if they have already invested in themselves, invested in their futures. Okay. This was the mistake I made when I was in college. Okay. I did not go all out on network marketing because I had to I had to follow my dad's wishes, to follow my parents' wishes. Which eventually, uh, which eventually forced me to rely on my profession. I didn't get anything out of it. Okay, so that led me to the time I was. Uh, I had no goals. I had no dreams. All I wanted was to uh, was to get my get my weekly allowance from my parents and just go to a, go to a mall and play video games or even see a movie. That's all I did for a good three years. Okay. Uh, the journey ahead is always uncertain. If you're a college, if you're a college graduate, you have to put that, put your future into your hands as early as uh, your your studying years. Even when you're, even if you're just a student, you have to do something. You have to invest in yourself as early as possible. Okay, not education-wise. All right. Let's let's leave that out. Let's leave that out of it. It's irrelevant. Investing in yourself means learning new skills. Okay, learning uh, how to start a new business, how to start a business, and by actually starting a business. That's the only way you can learn out on how to start a business is by actually starting a business. Okay. You should not make the mistake of your peers that you're too focused on studies. Your uh, your your number your only goal right now is to graduate from college and get a good job. Uh, 
get a nice salary. Wrong mindset. Wrong mindset. Now, I adjusted the filter so you can so I can be clear to you. Whoever's watching this. The future is always uncertain. Right? College degrees are worthless in the real world. If you don't have the skills and the mindset to to just survive the uncertain world, you, you can be depressed as you can be depressed as hell. You can be you can be depressed as hell. So if you graduate from if you if you finish school, don't celebrate yet. Do not celebrate yet. Your life has just begun. I'm just chilling right now because my laptop is getting updated. Okay. It's Windows 10, so automatic updates. Now it's taking a while to, to update this because it is a Windows 10 laptop. But I suddenly realized that hey. Hmm. Maybe there are maybe the updates are cooler right now. Maybe the updates are will give it more functionality. If you would uh, look at all the things that have a uh, long process, a what you call this, it takes time to to fully achieve the results. These are the ones that last. These are the ones that have uh, long, longer lasting results. Okay, the results are long term. It's more beneficial. It's more rewarding compared to the other processes that are um, that tend to result in a quick fix, that tend to uh, break down easily, that break down easily uh, after a few days, after or even or even within the day. Okay. Uh, slow and long processes. Okay. Here's here's what here's what you, you should realize when it comes to them. Slow and long processes, although although they take time, they are the most rewarding. Okay. They reap the most rewards. They reap better, if not better, rewards. That's why most uh, most business gurus, whether legit or not, they would say they would always tell us to trust the process. I tend to believe in that, right? I don't know about you, but if you trust the process, the rewards will be great. The rewards will be long term. Right? So, when was the last time you trusted the process? Okay, so I showed you a video by Roberto Blake, which I'm going to uh, give my take on. Now, basically, it's about bullying, and you can you can actually you can actually see that video on Roberto Blake's YouTube channel. Now, it's it is a rampant problem amongst content creators, uh, amongst influencers, even celebrities get bullied online. Right? It's a fact. It's a fact of life if you're a uh, if you're a content creator. I get bullied a few a few times, but I don't cry over it. I don't uh, I don't bash back. You know what I do? Comment filters. It's a very huge weapon against bullying. Now, I just set the tone. Comment filters are, um, yeah, your best hedge against bullying. Let me explain. 
when you, for example, uh, my best example is my YouTube channel. Okay, it has a setting there called hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. It's set to that, so it gives me a chance to um, to well weed out, okay, weed out the uh, the ambivalent to the obviously vulgar bullying. Like I always said in most of my posts, especially my videos, if your comment is bullshit, it will never see the light of day. And comment filters help me with that, right? They're both a lifesaver and a safeguard, most especially against bullying, right? I'm not going to engage in negative comments I'm not going to engage in potential bullying comments. If you're the bully, you can, well, posting, posting such a comment, it's like saying goodbye to that comment. You'll never see the light of day of that. That comment will never see the light of day. I fucking guarantee you. So the next time you feel uh, you're going to be bullied when you post, a potentially controversial video just go over to your settings and well if it has caught if the platform has common filters very good use it I just came across a TikTok documentary of so some sorts that um, about Nikola Tesla that made me raise a question was Nikola Tesla the smartest man in history? Compared him, comparing him to Edison, to the great Thomas Edison, well, yeah, he may be smarter than Edison, but hey, conceptualizing something like alternating current, it's not an easy thing, it's not an easy thing to keep in your head. All right. It's not an easy thing to keep in your head, but Tesla actually did it. It was all in his head, the concept of alternating current, and he knew it would work, and it did. He was able to demonstrate it over uh, uh, across, uh, what you call this? He was able to demonstrate that in, uh, in the University of New York, right? And then George Westinghouse noticed him after being fired by Edison, of course. And wow, uh, as they say, the rest is history. Right now, AC is, well, it's the current of choice. Okay. It's safer compared to direct current or DC, which was, which was discovered by, uh, by Edison. AC is much safer compared to DC. Okay. DC is now being used on solely for therapeutic for, for electrotherapy purposes. Okay, I know because I'm a physical therapy graduate. I have handled direct current before. Okay, but sadly, people have abused his knowledge. People have abused his lack of knowledge when it comes to money and uh, when it comes to money and. Uh, entrepreneurship he died poor right everyone knows that he died poor that's probably the pitfall of being um, being the smartest man in history and they say Einstein is the smartest man in history but I am I think I'm, I think I'm going to contend with that I'll have to differ on that Einstein and all his uh, infinite wisdom, okay, is there. Okay, but Tesla is prob was prob was probably the smartest man in history. Okay, he didn't just develop, he didn't just discover alternating current. Now, conspiracy, um, certain historical records have now shown, and certain conspiracy theories have uh, have sprouted up that he also invented that he also conceptualized laser the uh, doomsday device all right in the form of uh, not not exactly the nuclear bomb but a laser 
So history is yet to um, history is yet to to judge Nikola Tesla. So the question still stands. Was Nikola Tesla the smartest man in history? Like the uh, like the Dewey, like the Dewey I'm, I'm using right now? Comment below. <laughs>